The vehicle is now about two meters away from the International Space Station. At the time of undocking, Starliner and the International Space Station were flying approximately 260 statute miles over central China. Starliner will be beginning a breakout burn soon, which will take the spacecraft forward and above station. During this burn sequence, Starliner's thrusters will perform a series of 12 short firings. The entire sequence takes about five minutes to complete and allows Starliner to quickly break out to outside the approach ellipsoid, or AE. And about four minutes into the burn sequence, Starliner will exit the keep out sphere, or the KOS. And you can see those thrusters firing there on the left of your screen as Starliner backs away from Space Station. And we are now just uh, 35 meters away from the International Space Station. We saw a good first burn. Houston ISS, ISS thrusters enabled. Confirmation, all 27 jets have fired. Houston copies, ISS thrusters enabled. And you're seeing the light show there on your screen. And the first three of the 12 firings have completed, and there's about a 100 second pause until the fourth burn. Starliner is about 60 meters away. And flight controllers are reporting good attitude and good control. We are standing by for the fourth of the 12 burns in the series of firings as part of the breakout burn. As a reminder, the entire sequence will take about five minutes to complete. About four minutes into the sequence, Starliner will cross what is known as the appro or the keep out sphere. The keep out sphere is an imaginary 200 meter sphere centered on the space station. We are 15 seconds away from the fourth burn in the series of 12. And you just saw burn four, which just completed. We're hearing good burn. And the fifth burn in that sequence of 12 just completed, and it was a good burn. The sixth burn in the series of 12 was just completed and it was a good burn. We have, we are halfway through the series of 12, six more to go. You might be able to see some of those lights on the front of Starliner, a red and a green and a white. Those indicate the different sides of Starliner and they're used by the ISS crew to watch Starliner move away from the ISS along the undocking access. And we just heard good confirmation of both burn seven and eight completed. Starliner undocked approximately five minutes ago and has just a handful of short firings left in its breakout, breakout burn. And it is now about 150 meters away from the International Space Station. 
and we heard confirmation of a good burn nine. Three more to go. Burn 10, good burn. We have one more burn to go, but they have confirmed that Starliner has crossed the keep-out sphere or the KOS, which is an imaginary 200-meter sphere centered on the International Space Station that helps flight controllers here on the ground monitor the arrival and departure of visiting vehicles. Station Houston, space to ground two. Starliner has exited the keep-out sphere. Happy, she's exited the keep-out sphere. A reminder, this automated breakout sequence was chosen to use Starliner's forward thrusters, which have remained nominal during this flight. And we heard confirmation that all 12 burns in this series of breakout burn firings have completed, and they were all good burns. Starliner has crossed the keep-out sphere. So the next milestone for Starliner's departure will be crossing the Approach Ellipsoid, or AE. The AE is another invisible shape monitored by the flight control team measuring four kilometers by two kilometers by two kilometers. Starliner is scheduled to cross the Approach Ellipsoid in about 10 minutes. Vehicles outside the AE have to be on what we call a 24-hour safe free drift trajectory, which means the spacecraft would not cross into the Approach Ellipsoid for at least 24 hours, even if it lost all maneuvering capabilities. Once outside the Approach Ellipsoid, joint operations between Starliner, Mission Control, and the International Space Station Flight Control Room will conclude and Starliner will be on a path back to Earth. We're now taking a look from the VESTA system, which stands for Vision-Based Electro-Optical Sensor Tracking Assembly. It's a bit of a mouthful, so we like to call it VESTA. And this is a look from Starliner back at the International Space Station. The system is really the eyes of Starliner. It's able to pick up on features on the outside of station, like handrails and reflectors. You can see some of that on your screen there in the outlines. And it's the way to assess Starliner's position and attitude. It also gives the ground teams a very accurate look at Starliner's location relative to the station. So earlier we were taking a look from the station back at Starliner. Now we're looking from Starliner back at station. We're just under 10 minutes away from the AE exit, so in the meantime, we will check back in with NASA's Rob Navius in the International Sp Space Station Flight Control Room. Rob? Thank you, guys. Um, Flight Dynamics uh, has reported that Starliner is on a perfect trajectory backing away from the International Space Station and opening uh, a rate of about 13 and a half statute miles per rev. At the time of the deorbit burn, at uh, 10.17 and 13 seconds p.m. Central Time later this evening, the uh, vehicle will be about 56 statute miles away from the International Space Station. That deorbit burn, by the way, will be a 59-second burn. 
to slow Starliner down by 129.9 meters per second, a 4 OMAX burn. OMAX, the acronym for the Orbital Maneuvering and Attitude Control System, uh, thrusters and jets on the Starliner spacecraft. That will enable uh, Starliner to begin to drop out of orbit for its intended southwest and northeast trajectory across the Pacific Ocean, across Baja, California, and heading towards its landing at the White Sands Space Harbor in New Mexico. With the forward port of Harmony now vacant, that sets the stage, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, for the start of a couple of crew rotations that are coming up. Down at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, Don Pettit of NASA and Roscosmos cosmonauts Alexei Ovchinin and Ivan Wagner, and their backups are in the final stages of their preparations for launch next Wednesday. Their Soyuz 2.1A booster and the Soyuz MS-26 spacecraft that they will ride to orbit, uh, they, that vehicle will roll out to the launch pad in Baikonur on Sunday, and then final preparations will lead them to a launch next Wednesday at 11.23 a.m. Central Time, heading for a two-orbit, three-hour, ten-minute journey to dock to the International Space Station's Rosviet module. Now, that forward port on Harmony that was just vacated by Starliner's departure will be the port of call for NASA astronaut Nick Haig and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov and their launch no earlier than September 24th on the SpaceX Dragon Freedom spacecraft off of Launch Complex 40 at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. That will be about a 30-hour transit for those uh, two crew members to reach the International Space Station and the automated docking to the forward port of Harmony. Ultimately, Haig, Gorbanov, Butch Wilmore, and Sonny Williams will do a relocation of the uh, SpaceX Dragon uh, spacecraft from the forward port of Harmony to the Zenith port of Harmony, opening up that forward port for the arrival of the next SpaceX cargo ship, SpaceX 31, that's scheduled